In today's video, we're going over some interesting new Blender add-ons and updates that you probably missed. Add-ons for making clouds on the fly, sculpting, dealing with cameras, effects, and more. Before we continue, the Blender market is going through the spring sale with 25% off thousands of products from add-ons, courses, 3D models, and more. And if you don't know where to start, I have in the description of this video a list of some of the best add-ons and courses out there. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. We're gonna start with Creature Kit Bash. To be honest, this came about two years ago, and it brings kind of a new concept to kit bashing, because it helps you create creatures. But just a few days ago, it got a really interesting update that should get Blender sculptors pretty excited. The add-on still lets you build creatures in a faster way, by mixing and matching ready-made parts instead of sculpting everything from scratch. And the update expands on the Beastly library to over 220 parts, so you can get more options for making all kinds of weird and twisted creatures on your mind. The big new feature is real-time remeshing. The mesh dynamically updates as you move parts around, so you can place pieces anywhere and it rebuilds the geometry on the fly, which is really cool. Just keep in mind, once you start sculpting, you can't go back and reposition parts. This basically means it becomes a one-way street. Next, we're gonna talk about Dystopian Blocks. This is actually a new asset pack focused on building massive cold concrete environments. It includes over 145 meshes, including 45 core structures and a set of extra greebles. It leans heavily into brutalism with blocky forms and stark silhouettes and should be fairly enough for creating various cities or bleak sci-fi environments or industrial backdrops for that matter. All the assets are UV unwrapped with PBR textures going from 1K to 4K textures depending on your needs. And the pack is optimized for scattering complete with pre-made geo-scatter biomes so that you wouldn't have to scatter by hand. Now let's talk about something more utility focused. AutoCam is a free camera animation add-on, built for anyone tired of manually keyframing camera rigs inside Blender. I actually like this one, so instead of setting up curves and constraints, it lets you fly the camera through your scene like a video game, using simple controls, and it records the whole movement. From there, it can generate a path, later refine the curve, adjust interpolation, and control depth of field. The camera stays locked onto a focal target, via a dedicated empty, which you can animate too. You also have full control over the speed, path smoothing, and the option to reset or rebuild at any time. Generally speaking, this add-on is neat for creating smooth turntables, walkthroughs, or cinematic shots in general. There is also a new add-on called Transform Tools, which is a gizmo-based transformation add-on that brings a different approach to moving things around in Blender. Instead of using Blender's default move, rotate, and scale, it introduces two custom gizmos, one as a starting point and one as a target, and it lets you perform transformation between them. This reminded me a bit of how Adobe Illustrator handles its transformation tools, where you can define reference points and move or align objects more deliberately. The workflow centers around the 3D cursor and gives you fine control over positioning, alignment, and symmetry. You can snap objects or mesh elements between these two states and constrain movement towards planes or points, and even swap or copy transformations from one gizmo to another. If you're into precise layout or mirrored modeling, I think this will give you that extra level of control. It is a bit technical at first, but there is a light version to ease into it. Next up, we have a new add-on called Lazy Cloud, which is basically made to add customizable layers over your existing sky. It doesn't really replace the sky. It works whatever HDRI or sky shader you already have, layering the clouds to add more depth and atmosphere. You can choose from the white or black cloud types and add them to your scene. There is also an optimization panel that includes an auto button which adjusts project settings to make sure the clouds display properly especially in EV. If the clouds don't show up right away, just click the auto button again to fix the camera clipping range. 
The clouds are procedural and fully editable, and you can even randomize the seed, fine-tune the look, animate them, or even paint them directly in your scene. Another new interesting add-on is called X-Ray Selection Pro, which is a quick way to control object visibility in Blender, with maybe more extensive control, especially when working on dense or overlapping geometry. You can toggle the X-Ray mode with the Control x shortcuts, or click in the M panel and pick from the six presets like light, medium, strong, or use blue, green, and red tinted versions to visually organize your scene. And if the presets aren't quite right, you can customize the transparency and color tint, I mean color tint strength per object. It also takes care of your original materials. When you enable X-ray mode, it temporarily swaps in the transparent shader, and once you disable it, everything reverts and no manual cleanup is needed. You can also control backface calling, in addition to blend method, and even access everything from the right-click menu or F3. It works both in solid and material preview modes, without any glitches, which is a nice thing. Another new add-on is called Quick Comp Effects, which brings post-processing back to basics. So from what I can see, if you missed having a simple bloom toggle, like the old days, this add-on puts it right in the Render tab. Just click the checkbox, and your scene closes instantly. No no trees, no setup, no nothing, just results. It also includes a full set of compositing tools, like exposure and contrast tweaks, in addition to hue and saturation sliders, also chromatic aberration, lens distortion, and even Kuwahara filter for stylized looks. Each effect has its own set of sliders, and you can combine as many as you want. It all works live in both the viewport and the final render. The effects are layered in an optimized order, and you don't even have to enable the compositor manually, because it does that for you. Everything is built directly into Blender's properties panel, so installation is just drag and drop, and you are good to go. Another new interesting add-on is called Shot Sculpt Pro, made for fixing animations when you don't have time to go back and upgrade rigs or rerun simulations. It lets you sculpt directly on baked meshes, frame by frame, using shape keys. This means if a cloth sim ends with a weird fold or your rig can't quite hit a pose, you can just smooth things out or push shapes without having to redo anything. It is especially handy for working on cast simulations or tweaking anatomy details like muscle definition without setting up full muscle rigs. There is also a workspace to help manage edits, in addition to a simple panel for updating shape keys as you go. One of the useful parts is the Mesh Rango modifier. It uses geometry nodes to help transfer deformations and isolate edits. Basically, it gives you more control over your final shot, without having to touch the original rig or simulation. Next we're gonna talk about Soft Body Painter, which lets you define soft body simulation areas by painting directly on the mesh. So instead of assigning vertex groups manually, you just click a button to enter paint mode, mark the simulation zones, and apply the setup. Once that's done, you can tweak the simulation using built-in sliders for stiffness, bending, damping, and push and pull forces. There is also support for self-collision, in addition to face and edge collisions, and a weld option to pin parts of the mesh in place. It works non-destructively which means your original object stays untouched while the simulation runs on a duplicate. The interface is compact and everything updates in real time, making it easier to iterate without diving into Blender's physics panels. Now we're gonna talk about Keyflow, which is a really interesting add-on designed to centralize and simplify animation timing using a single control curve. So, instead of manually keyframe each object separately, from what I can see, you can group them under a parent and animate them using what the add-on calls points of interest. These are spaced out on the timeline, every 10 frames for instance, and you can control multiple parameters like position, rotation, and even focal length. Once set up, Keyflow replaces your keyframes with drivers and add a master control slider to the parent object. Moving this slider plays the animation, and using Blender's graph editor, you can easily adjust pacing by manipulating the curve, adding slow-ins, 
fast outs, or even pauses. The add-on also supports advanced setups. You can use a custom property to control things like focal length, or apply the same timing curve to different objects for coordinated movements. It is especially useful for camera animations, giving more precise control over focus points, motion smoothness, and hold durations. Last but not least, we're gonna talk about Laser Scan It, which is an add-on that adds a customizable laser scan effect to your materials. It builds a procedural shader in the note editor, which mimics scanning lasers. I think this is great for sci-fi assets, or maybe holograms, or stylized technical visuals. The setup is simple, letting you quickly inject the laser scan nodes into any material or object. You can control the scan line's direction along the X, Y, or Z axis, and adjust its color from the panel, or maybe add distortion or noise from more dynamic, flickering effects. It actually supports full rotation around any axis, enabling diagonal or radial scans, and it lets you even fine-tune brightness and beam width. In addition, all the changes are procedural and non-destructive, which means you can adjust the effect anytime you want. And there you have it, guys. If you like these add-ons, you will find all the necessary links in the description. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next one.